Welcome to track number two of Missions and Missionaries. I was a bit surprised to see some people who had been wealthy or even rulers who had been faithful with what they were given also on the throne. I was surprised to see some rich people there. However, this is the surprising part. He's now come to mention the largest group in the thrones. It seemed that the faithful women and mothers occupied more thrones than any other group. Women. It's amazing, huh? <laughs> Ladies, stand up. Huh? Is it not amazing? You are so weak. You may not admit it. You are so frail. You are so emotional. You have so many problems. You need a man to come and marry you before you be normal. Sometimes you are so unspiritual. Huh? Sometimes as women get older, they become more weather-beaten and hardened. And they become more, you know, I don't know what word to use. Difficult to reach, to, to, to influence. The sweetness is yeah, hardened, callous. The sweetness is gone. There's nothing pleasant. The pleasantness, the fresh waters that used to come and are not there, but bitterness. The bitterness of life comes forth. And yet, from this group, with more problems than anybody else, comes the highest reward and the most number. You. Huh? Is it not amazing? Because God has chosen the weak and the despised and those that are nothing and those that are not. One day I was employing some people and the only people who wanted to work for me were women. Women. <laughs> and I said, I work with them. Because the men, are, they are big, they are, you know, they are, they are busy guys. I remember one guy who was very good at the computer that I wanted him to work. No one didn't want to work for me. No one didn't want to work for, for me or for the church. We work in America for Americans. So listen to what Paul said. Two ladies were fighting. He says, <laughs> Listen, I beseech Judas and Sintiche that they be of the same mind in the Lord. Because, you know, they quarrel. I beseech you, dears, and I beseech Sintiche. Sintiche. <laughs> it's a good name. You can call your daughter that, Sintiche. That they be of the same mind in the Lord. Then I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women, help those women which labored with me in the gospel. Paul had women who were working with him. In the gospel. Yeah. He had men but he also had women. And he was trying to sort out the quarrels. I beseech Judas and Sintiche. Try to flow. Because <laughs> you know how you are. You see somebody. You know this one. Delete. And you are trying to delete her. <laughs> Erase. Erase as spirit comes. Eliminator. Terminator. Start to erase some of the people. Out. It's a Sintiche and Judas. You've not heard her name before, you see. Yeah. She's there. I beseech Sintiche and Judas. And he says, I entreat thee, also true yoke fellow, help those women. Help those women which labored with me in the gospel. 
with Clement also, and with my other fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. It's powerful, isn't it? So ladies, it's yours who Sintishes and Udiasis. Flow. Be preachers. Encourage your husbands and your beloveds to be pastors. Don't prevent them. Don't take them sideways. Backwards. When, when, they are, when they are very cool and they are not going forward in that direction. I've seen it. Some of the wives, they, they really want their husbands to work for the Lord and be a missionary. I remember one lady, you know, I told her the husband was supposed to be a missionary and there was some problem. So I told him, look, I think you should go back and find your job. You know, you cannot work. So I came out of my office and I saw the wife sitting there as though urine had been poured on her. She was sitting on her face and she said, what is wrong? And she said, oh, nothing. I said, what is wrong? No, nothing. I said, what is wrong? So my husband told me that he said he should go back to go and do his job. I said, don't worry. He's going to go. She wants it so badly. She wants him to work for the Lord. He has a good job. He goes abroad. He earns dollars, whatever. But she wants him to be a preacher. That's the kind of woman. Sinti <laughs> Shea. She wants it. But you see, the enemy of the cross would take her husband sideways. Are you sure? Hath God said? Hath God said? Woman. One day the Lord revealed to me, he said, I created heaven and earth and a woman sported it. What I created, a woman sported. One woman sport everything. Huh? <laughs> One woman spoiled it all. Through her sideways and her half God said, Did you really? Are you sure? Why don't you really? Why don't you eat it? I've eaten some. Why don't you also eat it? You want me to eat your own? What will happen to me? It's some you love me. You really? Yeah, 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 yeah. And we all went hell. Sideways. 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 And there are some women, they are like salted lands. They are like sea sand in which only coconut can grow. Yeah. Nothing grows in them. We preach to you. We minister to you. Corn seed, every seed, but a salted land. No, nothing can come forth. There is no scripture. There is no word. There is nothing deep. What kind of woman are you? Taking us sideways. Taking us here and there and there and there. Oh no. It's time for us to come back and have a certain kind of person. Woman. I tell you, you are very powerful. It's not just you through your husband's but as individuals. There are some pastors, when I send them, I have to send another pastor. But there's, I mean, another, another person. But some pastor, when I send them, I, it's just their wife that has to be with them. It's like another minister is with them. But some, you send them, you send the wife, it's like you have sent a ghost. So you have to send another <laughs> person. <laughs> You've sent the phantom. They have to send somebody else to be with the person. Zimbo. <laughs> Enemies of the cross. And some of you are not yet married. And you are going to marry someone. Listen. Two of us. Both the women and the men. If you are a man. Do not marry an unspiritual girl. 
Amen. Don't marry somebody who is come to the church because you are in the church. Amen. She will change. When the time comes, she will show her true colors. Marry somebody who is in the church apart from you. It wasn't through you. You are not the convert and take, convert and possess. <laughs> the person was there already. <laughs> <laughs> because brothers recently I called a, I called a, one of my missionaries his wife said I'm not going there I'm not going <laughs> Ziggy Ligi. I said she, <laughs> she said I'm not going <laughs> She said, I'm not going. I'm not going. That's it. That's it. I'm not going. (laughs) It got to a point. The husband said, I'm still going. (laughs) I'm going anyway. When he said that, I remember the scripture where Jesus said, I came to set a man at variance against his house. Husband against the wife. Wife against husband, children against whatever. I tell you. So if you are thinking of ministry as a brother, don't look at how voluptuous the woman is. No matter how voluptuous, tantalizing, and enticing she may be, it will lose its power to interest you very shortly. Yeah? Yeah? Some, one day I was talking to one brother. I said, look, you are going to get married. He said, yeah. I said, look, do you know that soon you'll be married to this sister and she will be standing in the room naked as a banana and you won't feel anything. He said, and he was sitting by his, he was sitting by his beautiful beloved. And I, and I said, look at her. In fact, I made her say, come and stand. I said, I made her beloved come and stand. He was looking at her. I said, can you imagine it? He said, I cannot imagine it. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot imagine what you are talking about, pastor. I cannot imagine it. <laughs> yeah. This. I said, look at her. She would not have anything. You would not feel anything. (laughs) 
I said, can you believe it? He said, I cannot believe it. Because you are saying it. I, but I cannot believe it. So I called another couple who have been married for some weeks. And I called and I said, I told them what I was saying. I said, is it true? I asked them, wife, that you will be there naked and he is not mine. She said, he will be saying, hurry up and get this. <laughs> sharing with you, I'm drawing a curtain for you to see so that you see that oh, that is what it is. So that then you would tell yourself it is something that is driving me, but not that there is something that I will, can, can, can enchant me or will satisfy me. And therefore it mustn't be the basis. One day I met a brother. It's so sad. Pastor, I've been fornicating. I've been fornicating. I can't stop. So one day, he said to me, he said, Pastor, I want to be castrated. I want to be castrated. (sighs) And do you know why he wanted to be castrated? Because when you are castrated and your testicles are removed, the source of testosterone which is the source of the hormone that causes you to be interested. You see, if it's some of you, the reason why you are interested in the concept of marriage at all is because of the So if we were to block your testosterone or to stop it, you look at them and say, look, you know what, uh, what do you call it? Come, the, uh, in the, in the uh, Bible time, the eunuchs, they were bathing the queens. They could be bathing them, bathing them. <laughs> Big, big men, giant, but they don't, they don't look at them like two. It's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so the brother, so the brother said, I want to be castrated. I want to be castrated. Because he knows that the source of the interest in all the women that he has been sleeping with is the hormones. You see, and so some of you are taking decisions because of hormones, not the Holy Spirit. So hormonal decisions. <laughs> Brothers, am I helping you? How many of you are not yet married, brothers? All right. All right. So do not use the voluptuous appearance. They look juicy. They look soft. They look enticing. They look like fruits on a tree that must be plucked. And when that veil is removed, then you see the other nature, the godlessness, the lack of scripture. One day, I said, I went to somebody's house, and the child was talking about her mother, and she said, my mother, but the husband, the father was a pastor, but my mother, she said, my mother will never read the Bible unless she's going to preach. 
She's just watching films. Films, films, films. Never read this. Me and my arm here. I don't see my mother reading ever. I've never seen her reading unless that day she's going to preach. And you see the godlessness. After the veil has been removed and it's now not as attractive and enticing and mysterious. Actually, it's because of the mystique. That is what is even the attraction. Actually, the attraction is in the mystery. When the mystery is gone, the attraction is gone. And you see that she's not even interested in God. She's not even spiritual. She doesn't even read her Bible herself. She doesn't even pray. And she says, I won't go. I won't go. And then another, another missionary wife came and said, I also, I also won't go. I think they were comparing those. I also won't go. <laughs> so brothers, don't think that it's only sisters who spoil their ministries because of the men they marry. But men also spoil their ministries because of the women they marry. Because although you may think you are the head, the wife exerts such influence and power. You know, if your wife says, I won't come to church, and you are the pastor, one day I saw a certain wife, she said, I won't go to, I won't go to church again. And she said, I'm going to another church. Yeah. I've never seen a pastor more humbled by that thing. Because then you are going to church. Your wife says, I'm going to another church. It was very hot. Because it's just you go to church. It's like your wife, who is in the house, is, is saying something else by her actions. So, brothers, watch out. Leave them. Watch whether they are really spiritual. Every woman, even the most beastly of them, they all want marriage. And they will do almost anything to be married. Be the most unspiritual. They will pretend to be spiritual. They will flow. One brother, he went to a church. He went to lay hands. He was ministering. He laid hands on the sister. Ah! Receiving the spirit. Smiling. Lifting up her hand. Today you should see her. The most difficult, hardened, and yielding, and bending. Oh, a disgrace and an embarrassment to her husband. But I remember, because I remember when they were getting married. And I saw how she was flowing. I said, these things, there is more to it than you see in the eye. So brothers, if I use the brothers who should have been standing. Hmm? Brothers, you may go to the mission for your wife who say, you know, I want to speak my airway. I can't speak Spanish again. <laughs> <laughs> I can't speak it again. Again. <laughs> yeah. I can't speak it again. <laughs> it's enough. It's enough. I won't speak it again. Are you listening to me? Names. Abba. Abba, isn't it? That's Nana, isn't it? Baba. And that's... Huh? Masala. Huh? And that's Irene. And that's who? Dillian. Dillian. And that's who? 
Natasha. Hmm. And that's who? Two Natashas. Are you twins? They are friends. And that's <laughs> Margaret. Okay, sit down. Are you listening? Yeah. And then the ladies. I was telling the brothers, when you are getting married, don't be moved by those things. And the ladies also say you are being called by God. I remember some sisters in the, this church say, God has called me. I'm going to be a church planter. Glory be to God. I'm going to be a church planter. This and that. Then, one day, I saw the sister. She was taken off somewhere with a brother from an orthodox church. An orthodox church. Not that it's not a good church, but it's like the vision that we have to do church planting and so on. It's not the same there. And you realize that now the person ministry is over. One sister, she was working for the Lord. The husband will call her. Talk to her. But you are wasting your time. I don't want you are doing this and that. Oh. In fact, a woman who is married to someone who does not want to allow her to do what she wants to do is one of the top two sen- or top three seniors. Top three. <laughs> it's in the top three Sinyazos. Do you know Sinyazo? It's, it's in the top three of life. Yeah. If you are married to someone and you want to work for God and you love God because soon either marriage, childbearing, those things, wedding, those society things, it will soon be over. It will be nothing to you. Then you, your life's passion will be coming forth. And you can't do it too. Because you have married an enemy of the cross. Who minds earthly things. And whose mind is just on this earth. And you are a carrier of the cross. And you are married to an enemy of the cross. Hey. It would have been better that you didn't marry. So, sisters, we are often impressed by the nice, suave, smooth-talking, handsome, khaki-swinging, mobile phone ringing, deep-voiced brother. You are impressed. Who mind earthly things? Marry a man who lo- loves God. Ladies. Ladies. Marry a man who loves God. Because as you grow, your ability to enchant him, inspire, attract, it will fade like eva- like. Hot water that is beat from a kettle. It's finished. When you look in the mirror, you will see that who you who used to be slim, sister what? You have turned into a amorphous <laughs> an amorphous uh, group of whatever adipose tissues. Your breasts which used to be here are now reaching your belly button and below. <laughs> you don't like my message. <laughs> Zigiligi.
Yeah. You you see your beauty is be- that's why women can't stand each other at the point. Or they know you understand that it's vanity. And that he was interested in me for five seconds. Now he's interested in her for another five seconds. Because she's mysterious to him. And then she he'll go and be interested in but I'm not mysterious anymore. So he's interested in another mysterious person. They don't like each other because of that. You see. So ladies, what will keep him is a certain spiritual tone of heart and mind. But not your body. Not your face. Not your finger. Your finger. Your finger. Hmm? But God because when you are a spiritual man and the wife has changed in her bodily shape, you will. One brother he said to me, I asked him, Do you love your wife? Well, I'm not sure. <laughs> and I said, Why? He said, She's too fat. Do you know her size? Her size would be about um, even Lillian, stand up, even she's. She's bigger than the girl. She was smaller than this. Yeah, she said she's too fat. So I said, hey, is this is your body of fat? She said, yeah, she's too fat. That's not how she was. And I said, I said to him, do you love to talk to your wife? No. So why? I don't enjoy her discussion. Hey. He said, you used to ring me for hours. Now you don't enjoy talking to me. Now you say I'm fat. Fatness, there's very little you can do about it. Very little. But a spiritual man will say, this fatness is a cushion for me. (laughs) <laughs> Are you listening to me? Yeah. What I'm saying, you will not easily hear it practically. Yeah. That's why I'm telling you what I'm telling you. Because you hear them privately. I don't want my wife. I want another wife. But that's what you have. Huh? Yeah. So, do not let your decision to marry take away this throne. It's yours. I said it's yours. Yeah. Both women and men. It's yours. And fight! Sit down, brothers. Stand up. If you are married, stand up. I just want to tell you that your wife is not God. In fact, she may be very far from God. Huh? (coughs) Follow God, not your wife. God is the one who saved you. Your wife didn't save you. Your wife didn't shed her blood for you. Follow God. Be strong. Lead. And be a great person in the house of God. A man who cannot even lead his wife. You want to lead a church. It's in the Bible. The wife is strong. She's leading you through this and through that. You cannot lead her. You cannot control her. Are you worthy to lead a church? A church full of orangu, strong-headed people, opinion leaders, Absalom, rich people, whatever. You cannot lead a, your wife. Yeah, I'm afraid she would divorce her. You have to choose strength. One day I met a brother, I said, you are a prisoner of your wife. And I said, your life is impoverished 
and it's the way it is because you are led by your wife. And it's true. Through this, through that, through whatever. Women, allow your husband to lead you. Even if you want to influence, let him lead. Don't turn him into a semi-man. I tell you, ministry is connected very directly to these things. And how you decide. You see what I'm talking about now? Some of you brothers here, you have great callings. And whatever. Only because of your wife, you will never do it. Oh yeah. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's the bottom line. You will never do it because of the woman. Even how to convince her. Already she doesn't listen to you. Now how to convince her about something like this. It's difficult to talk to her about so many. Do you know one of the people most difficult to talk to is your spouse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? To convince, to lead. Oh, man. My brother, your name again at the back there. Marvin. Yeah, Marvin. Are you from Greenford? Nottingham. Ah, oh, yes, Nottingham people. And you're also from Nottingham. From where? Apache. All right. And my brother? Where is he from where? Collindale. Mm. Wonderful. So, I can preach and preach and preach and the woman will spoil your call. Because well, a woman spoil the creation. How much more your calling? God himself created and the woman came and scattered it. How much more your calling? <laughs> no matter who the woman is, if you don't lead and you are not strong, your calling will be spoiled. Oh yeah. As you, as you see me, I'm strong. I, I lead my house. Oh, yeah. What I do is not always what my wife does. Many times I do what my wife does not want me to do. And I do it because I have to do it. Yes. And I sometimes, when I'm preaching, I say, No, you shouldn't say that. I say, When you preach, say that. When I preach, this is what I'll say. Mm-hmm. When it's your turn, then you say it in those words. Otherwise, I've become you. And my words have become your words. Yeah. And they are not my words anymore. When I want to preach, I preach the way I want to preach. When it's your turn, because you also have a chance to preach. And when you preach, you, you say it in that way. Yeah. And things that I want to do, so this is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to do that. Sometimes I sharpen my forehead. This is the, the direction it's going. Do you think we'll be here if I was just, you don't want to do that? No. We'll not be here at all. I'm going to start a church in South America. We put on the television, and then you see South American airplane crashes into mountain of whatever. I said, okay, I'm going. Bye bye. I'm going to. I'm going to this place where a plane has just crashed. You get up, so I'm going for a camp. I'm going for this. Then you put on the television, and you see American Airlines take off, and the engine, eh? those round things fall. It falls off, and the whole plane goes to fall into the sea. Then you are going to sit on a plane. I went for a camp in America and I saw some of the pastors will not even bother to come for the camp. And that time it was September 11. They are just like, when you are going to board the plane, you see soldiers in America with guns at the plane and at the airport. I've never seen anything like that before. And you see, I travel from Ghana on planes, frightening planes, but you see that everybody is looking. <laughs> When somebody gets out, everybody gets out. Hey! And you are not sure what is under the plane. If there's going to be suddenly, pull! And then that's it. Very frightening. Do you think that if I was just following fears and feelings and what have you, would you think we would be here today? No way. No. We don't follow fear. We follow God. We don't follow wives. We don't follow women. We follow God. And 
we follow we follow God, we follow the Holy Spirit. Okay. Huh? Look at you, great, great guys. But you can't do much. You are you are handcuffed. 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 Why do you think Pastor Obi is in Kenya? Because he's following you. No, I don't think you told him to go to Kenya. Did you tell him to go to Kenya? Huh? I didn't. Yeah. To live your secure life here? Did you? No, I didn't. Yeah. Were you not anxious when he was going? Because <laughs> just before he left, one of our church members' brother had been shot from carjacking. And I hear it's very rampant there as well. So. <laughs> yeah. Pastor Robert went to Jamaica. When he left, he was there for 24 hours or so. Went in and came. By the time he was at the airport going there, murdered eight people in the town on the news. If he told me he was in Trinidad, he was there, they were having I said, church or something, and then suddenly there was some commotion outside, some gunshots were people, and then he, he rushed, and he said, look, let's just go down, this and that. Then he saw some people outside, they were just playing cards, and so he said, oh, they're this year shooting and killing, and this is normal, we just be playing our cards here, <laughs> we don't think about it. <laughs> And do you know where they were living before? They were living in Geneva, Switzerland. Earning thousands of dollars. But you see, he's got a very good wife. She would love to work for God. Yeah, Vida would love to work for the Lord. She would like, she loves it. They pray that you marry a good woman who loves God. Amen. She will always encourage you. and She will not say, I'm not going. Because there are some people... Because the wife works at the United Nations and is earning so many thousand, thousand dollars a month. She told me how many thousand dollars a month that she saves. Thousands of dollars every month. Saves, not I mean, after using everything. Saves. How many women will walk away from that? Instead of my security, my life, my children, my this, my that. You see, what a different kind of person. This is a kind of woman that we are looking for. And not somebody who will stand up and delete a call of a man, a throne, their eternal destiny. Not just a few 20 years and 16 years left that you have, but the eternal destiny of him and you. You have deleted and erased it and cancelled and obstructed it and used your powers to, I mean, prevent it from happening. Listen carefully to what I'm saying. It may seem funny to you as I'm talking about her marriage and all this. But I tell you, if you are not strong and if you are not determined, you can stand here and lift your and say, Amen. I want to do this, this and that, that and that, this and that. You better me stand up. You, you, you want to marry somebody? Huh? You want to marry her? She's in Ghana. Yeah. If you are not strong, you, you see, number one, you will not marry her. Number two, you will not even work for God. She will not. She, you are here, the person is there. He said, follow me, follow her. So I stay, I'm here, I'm there. You see, if you don't have a certain mind, it cannot work. There's a certain strength that you need. And in fact, that is the reason why the Bible says that. If a man cannot rule his own house well. All those scriptures, now that I'm understanding them, all, how many are understanding it better now? Yeah, yeah. So a man cannot actually lead the woman. How can he lead the church? A church full of... <laughs> Sometimes I look at the people in my church. I have professors in the church. People who have been vice chancellors. Every Sunday when I preach in church, I have a vice chancellor of a whole university sitting there. Lawyers, millionaires, doctors, what have you, accountants, people, they are all there. Everybody with his mind. <laughs> yeah, everybody with his opinion. How can I lead these people? 
If I cannot even lead my own wife. And I cannot lead. There are times when my wife is crying. I don't. When I see that she's crying, I just go out and say, I don't follow tears. I've learned not to follow tears. It's not only a strong quarreling spirit that can lead you. Tears can also lead you. Moods can lead you. And other forms of whatever. I think I've learned. I said, this I will not follow this thing. I know this thing. I said, we will finish just now. <laughs> you finish right now. No, you stop. <laughs> I'm preaching a very good message that needs to be in a stadium or satellite. A satellite or, I mean, something higher. <laughs> I tell you, you don't follow tears. I don't follow faces. I don't. Sometimes I had a meeting with some pastors and I was talking. I said, When you are preaching, I told them your wife is not God. Don't look at her face when you're preaching. And a brother, a brother said, A brother said, hey, This is my greatest problem. So what he said, then he said, That very day I was preaching. He said, I was preaching. When I saw my wife's face, I saw that she was angry. She was, she was not happy with what I was saying. And immediately I became confused that I was doing something wrong in the preaching. And I said to her, I said, brother, don't look at her face when you are preaching. It can control you. Unless her face is going to encourage you. But if you know that it doesn't encourage you, don't look at it, her face. <laughs> Do you feel so strong? Fear. There are two spirits that worry women more than men. I didn't say it. The Bible said it. It said, if you be daughters of Abraham, you will do well if you are not afraid with any amazement or emotionalism. Fe- afraid. Afraid. Fear. And emotions. They are not two things you must follow. Follow God. Don't follow fear. They are afraid. So one day I told my wife, you know, if I die, you'll be okay. Be okay. And the children will be okay. Sometimes children of fatherless people are better off than people with fathers. Many of you, your father didn't look after you, but you are okay. Are you not okay? Yeah. Oh? Yeah. You're surviving. One day I was standing by the dead body of one of my pastors. Dead body of one of my pastors. And the doctor of that department came to me and he said, Don't worry. People will be saying, Lighthouse, why did the pastor die? God is not with them. He said, Don't mind them. He said, My father died when I was in my mother's womb. Yeah, he's a special surgeon. He said, My father died when I was in my mother's womb. He said, if my father had been alive, perhaps I would not be who I have become. The only one in Ghana. He said, God take care of me. He said, he said to me, he said, death is part of life. It's part of life. Death is part, part of our lives. It's death. It's something that we will experience. It comes. He said, you'll be okay. God takes care. He has a way of taking care of us. In a short while, you see that God has taken care yeah. of you. I said, oh, my children, okay. I trust them to. At the end of the day, some of you, your fathers were alive, but you were doing things they didn't know what you were doing. Oh, yes. Am I right or am I wrong? Yes. Right. Right. So 
I remember one guy. I mean, he had, he had a girlfriend staying in the house with him. Like, the, the girl was living in there. She was there doing everything. The father doesn't know, and neither does the mother. He lives there. She baths. She hangs her panties here. She does everything. They don't know that she's there in the house with her. <laughs> Stop pretending as if you don't know what I'm talking about. Huh? <laughs> Are you listening? Yeah. We don't follow fear. So one day I sat down with my wife and I said, I said to her, if tell me what to do. If you die, advise me. What should I do if you die? Because if I said if you were to die, I would really want to talk to you. So I advise me what to do. Because I'll be hot. I'll be alone. I will not know what to do. So tell me what to do. And she told me, don't do this and don't do this and don't do this. Easy. And I said, you need to tell me what to do. And I, I, I don't know if she asked me, but I, I know what I have to tell her. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. God will take care of us. You are gone. It's better. To die is gain. We are not following fear. Fear is a demon. It's an evil spirit. Have you thought of it following a demon and following the Holy Spirit? Where would the demon take you? That's why we in ending you say shame on life. <laughs> Because where the demon will take you to fight, uh, you know, you'll be sorry for yourself. Shame on life. That's all you can say. Shame on life. We don't follow fear. Any woman will be, you will sit on a throne if you don't have these two. Fear does not lead you. And you don't, your emotions or amazement does not take over. Amazement is when Thinking processes are paralyzed and something else takes over. Amazed. No, cool down, relax, calm down. Think logic. Let's move. But many women don't use logic, they use amazement. <laughs> That's when you do well as a woman, when you are not amazed. Ah! You see someone riding a bicycle, a motorbike, he's sitting at the back, say, hold it. Ah! I don't know what to do. Ah! Don't be amazed. Sit down quietly. Hold the person. Hold the bicycle and move. Don't flip your head. Ah, ah, I don't know what to do. You are going to kill yourself. You are afraid on the bike and you are amazed. <laughs> Zavelugu. No, you know, you know why we are talking about this? Because all my preaching, all that I say, I just need a woman to say, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> no. That's the end of my preaching. Power, anointing, preaching, word, revelation, insight, gifting. No, 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 no. no. No, I said no. I said, I don't, I don't feel, I don't feel it. I don't feel that God has said, I won't do it. I won't do it. That's all. I said, I don't want it. You said what? Bolivia. <laughs> it's finished. The whole camp is over. Just one word. That's the end of everything. Is it not amazing? Just one word. Everything is gone. All this beautiful revelation. You heard it. We started with John Wesley. We started with how God, by prophecies, you can war a good warfare. And I'm telling you the prophetic weather that I believe the Lord has given me for these chairs here. Eh? Horses are ready. Torches have been released. 
little groups have been gathered like in John Wesley's time, being trained, even though we are called inferior and what Ghanaians and whatever, we are the ones that God has chosen to use it. Maybe the Americans don't like it, but we want it. We are here. We don't have money, but we have God. I said, we don't have money, but we have God. And we want to do it. And a woman will come and say, No, we won't go. Our children are not of that age now. Okay? Okay? And your mother will never accept such a thing. And my mother will never like such a thing too. And I don't know where that place is. And I won't go. That's it. Finish. If you don't have a strong man who says, I'm going. One brother, he was supposed to move his house. Move. He has built his house. His wife said she wouldn't go to the new house. Because the new house is not fully complete. She said, that is what we have done. So the wife said, me? Yeah. I will go. <laughs> yeah. So you know what he did? You know what he did? He moved. He just moved. Yeah, he just moved. She, so she, she was there like a... A widow in the house. After some time, she decided to move. Yes, yeah. yeah, she stayed in the old house. So I'm moving. Stay and do whatever you want to do. Yeah. You know that story? Yeah. Huh? Are you sure you don't know it? Do you speak, huh? Now, if you are gun, if you are gun, see, every tribe has some features that are peculiar. Sometimes because of the spirit in that area. Like, for instance, in Collegon, where we, our church is, there's a lot of guns. It's quarreling. It's basically a spirit of quarreling. <laughs> uh, and, and when a woman, no, when a woman, it's a gun woman. Some, it's Paul said it. He said, you Christians are slow belly, this, that. There are some features sometimes. And in the terms of the guns, you find out that they, they tend to be unyielding. When, when I met one uh, brother, you know, and he was saying that you know, his brother had gone to marry a certain girl. And he said that, well, then the wife made a comment. Said, when he was married, he was looking at ties. <laughs> she said, she said it is not, it's not easy for him in the house today. The girl has got seven sisters. All are divorced except her. And she is not divorced because the husband is a pastor and try hard to keep this gun woman at bay and in the house. And you see, that, that thing, if you don't take care, it can lead you to your own destruction. So if you are a gun, you are a woman, be very careful because you think that you are just whatever, but before you realize, you have become a witch. And now this, there's this brother whose father was talking. He says that, you know, uh, he did, if he goes to heaven and he sees Peter, you know, and the gate. And Peter says that he should go to hell. He will say, And he said, you tell Peter, Bomo, Bomo, ya hell, ya hell, Lemo, ya hell, Makela, Lemo, ya hell, ya hell, ya hell. That should go to hell. He is not going to hell. And the guy is talking that he, this is the argument that he will present at the gates of heaven whilst you are on earth. And he, Peter, rather should go to hell. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Le mot, il y a... Are you listening? So please, it's very important. Humble yourself. All my preaching can be deleted by one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah means a ungo. Yeah. One lady said, I'm not going. She gave me about ten reasons why I'm not going. She said, I'm not going. My child is this. My this is that. I have this to do. I have this sickness. I have this problem. I have this. Yeah. yeah. And she didn't go. <laughs> and she's still there up till today. She's not going. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> so you see how powerful a woman is? God made they see the legs, human beings created the image of God. One person came, scattered the whole thing. So all my preaching can be neutralized by somebody. Is it not amazing? That's why I'm saying all that I'm saying. So that if that's your chair, huh? if that's your chair, look, I've done what I have to do. My role now is to train people in small groups. And I'm doing it. I paid the price I have to pay when I was 25 years old. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. I can never pay your price for you. I cannot pay the price for my son David and Joshua. They have to know God for themselves. Daddy cannot do certain things for you. Daddy cannot go to the exam room for you. Daddy cannot write the exam for you. You have to do it yourself. No matter how I love you all, there are some things you have to do for yourself. No one, no matter how much he cares for you, can do it for you. You have to do it for yourself. You have to suffer certain things. And you just have to experience it. It's just how it is. It's just how it is. And let flow. You understand? So, who is it who is going to be in Bolivia, in Guatemala? I can't do it because I can't go to 10,000 places. That's why Jesus left when he left and he said, go. You go. Go into the world. Who should go into the world? Great apostles. I never preached even one message. Not a message. But he said, go. <laughs> go. No experience. Go. Go. You will learn by teaching. <laughs> Did you see? We read it from the book. You will learn by teaching. When you are teaching, you will learn. Many times when you are preaching, when you are going to preach, you just know, preach. You will learn it. As you preach it. It forms as you preach. Keep talking. It will become clearer. As you keep talking. The ministry. You can't know until you are out there sometimes. Not sometimes. That's a fact. You can watch it. Admire it. But you go out there. You also have to fall into the ground and die. So you can listen, you can love the message, you can hear this, but you've got to do what you've got to do. And don't let anyone stop you. It's your turn to take your crown. You may take just a hundred people before you die. But just those hundred people will take a million people one day. And it will be worth it. In California. Small little apartment. He wrote a letter when Kent Papa Hagen died. And he said in the letter to the church, he said, and I hope to join you soon. He said, I know of no one who has influenced more people than Kenneth Hagen in the ministry. And you have gone to be with the Lord and I hope to join you soon. Glory.
He doesn't live with palaces with golden forks on. He lives a little apart. There's nothing here. There's not, you see, you will come to that conclusion. So come to that conclusion when you are young and change your course. Change your course now. Don't, don't be old when you come to those conclusions. Don't be withered and weary and tired of life and everything is over. Then you say, ah, what Bishop said is true. What the word of vanity of vanity, all is that. No, no, no. You don't need to. Somebody has discovered it already. I read what the thing said. Shame on life. It really paid her. Life really paid her. That's why she said, shame on life. I have a new life. I said, I have a new life. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. The life I now live, I live by this. You see, the old guy is dead and a new life has begun. You see me? Dag Heward Mills, the original Dag Heward Mills is gone. The guy who was a doctor, who was that, the son of Mr. Heward Mills, a long time ago, buried. Finished. I've been at my funeral and everything finished long ago. It's a new person. The life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. I'm crucified of original person with his with original plan for my family. Oh, that one there. It's finished and crucified and buried. The funeral, we keeping burial, cemetery, tombstone have been made. I'm there already. Nevertheless, I live. The, and who is living? Not I, but Christ. And the life I now live, the, the new life I'm living, I live by the faith. It's a life of believing in things. That's all that it is about. The life I now live. Oh yeah? My life I now live, I'm living because of things I believe. My faith makes me pray. Spend time with a God I cannot see. He's preparing me. That's why He has not revealed Himself to me. In a certain way. It's for my own glory. Because the more I do in the dark, the higher my rewards are. The more that I can do in the night, the more I can play the piano with my eyes closed, the more people will clap for me. And the more the angels are amazed. And they say, look at a guy, he can't see, he can't feel, he, can't, he has not seen it before, he has not been brought here before. And look at the way he's running. As though he has seen it. As though he said, he takes those binoculars, pretend in the office as though he sees something. What? What the kind of person is that? He seems to believe so much. My crowns are increasing. The glory is increasing. Blessed are those who have not seen. And yet they believe. Blessed to be envied by such people. And that is why we are working in the dark. Without being able to see. Because God is giving us a chance to earn the crowns by faith. Not by a good life, but by faith. By faith. Hallelujah. Are you listening? God is blessing you. I say, I feel Him blessing you tonight. Oh yes, He's changing your life. I said, He's changing your life. Is giving you a life of faith. For by faith the elders obtain a good report. The good report is not because you were a virgin. It's not because you didn't have any girlfriend. It's not because you didn't have a boyfriend. It's because you believed. This is what you must get. Like God told me, do things because you believe. Only do things that are based on what you believe. If it's a vision or preaching or the word, do the things that are because of belief, not because they are good. Not because there is a need, but because there is a belief or a faith or a vision or something that needs believing. Then do those ones. If you want to know which ones to do, there are good things, nice things, moral things, helpful things. And the, the things that you do because of a belief, those are the ones you must do. <laughs> you see, Paul said, 
But what things were gained to me, those I kind of lost. For I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but down, that I may win Christ and be found in Him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but the righteousness which is through faith. Righteousness or goodness to which come through faith. The righteousness which is of God by faith. Faith, not the righteous, not, not having my own righteousness. Stand up. Remember, I said, oh no, this is a holy girl. This is a holy Mary. She's a virgin. She was a perfect whatever before she got married. She's a beautiful woman at home in perfection. She doesn't lie. She doesn't shout. She doesn't sin. She doesn't what? She doesn't whatever. She's the most beautiful woman. Like somebody said, there's nothing like that. The only way this girl can be good is that I may be found in him, not having my own righteousness. Not, not your own idea of what is righteousness. But the righteousness which is by faith, through the faith of Christ. That is what is going to, that's what makes me righteous. Not because I have not done this or I have not done that or I have done this or I have not done that. It's that you believe in things. That is why the elders obtain the good report through faith. And not by being a drunkard, not a drunkard, not a thief. That's why Joseph is not the man of the God's heart. Joseph is not the man of the God. The man of the God's heart is David the murderer. David the adulterer. David the whatever. <laughs> All the good things you did. They, Joseph, Joseph is the one. By our way, we would have chosen Joseph. Oh, yes. We would have said Joseph, the guy, he didn't sleep with a Potiphar's wife. I mean, some woman is coming, a mysterious oh. queen, whatever, she's coming, Potiphar in her, whatever, she's bringing herself. He said, no, I don't like it. You are a young man, you don't have a wife, you have not slept with anybody, been in prison for a long time, somebody is giving you a free scholarship like that, sleep with her and just be happy and let things move on. No, I don't like it. Joseph, we would have chosen, wouldn't you have chosen Joseph? David was peeping. Bathsheba was bathing, he was bending and looking. All of us have peeped before. Have you not peeped before? Huh? <laughs> have you not peeped before? David was peeping. David was peeping. How many have peeped at pornography before? You peeped. You peeped on the television. You peeped through the holes. <laughs> you peeped at things. You shouldn't peep at. David was peeping. <laughs> <laughs> he was peeping at Bathsheba. I said he was peeping at Bathsheba. Then he went further and he slept with her. Then he slept with her enough times to make her pregnant. Then her husband came and he killed her. God said, I like this guy. Joseph, who didn't sleep with the person? He never said, this is my man after God's heart. Just let him live his life through. The only thing they said about him, by faith, which was the only act of faith maybe, he gave commandment concerning his bones. This was the only thing that it is recorded about. The rest, he didn't sleep with this by faith. He didn't sleep. No, no. It wasn't by faith. It was, it was good character, moral, whatever. But the one that said that, one day God will remove my bones. That's what they wrote in them. <laughs> that's what they wrote about. The things you believe, that's what's going to make you good. Yeah. No, because you did this, you didn't do this, you did, did that. One day the Lord was telling him, he said, why wouldn't you want to marry a prostitute? And I said, oh Lord, you know, I'm not saying, shut up. Who are you? Dirty boy. Dirty boy. You are too clean to marry a prostitute? You think you are better than that, eh? You are not even qualified to be married to a prostitute. She's even better than you if she believes. We have our own self. Read the demons in this book. Self-righteousness and righteous judgment, respectability. You think you are better than what? You are nothing. He said that I, may, that I may win Christ and be found in Him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. That's, that's real righteousness. So I was beginning to look at some of the things I was doing. And the Lord said, do the one that you are doing because of maybe a vision or a dream or something that you feel in your heart. Like when I wanted to have this meeting, 
I called Pastor Richard in Ghana. I felt have a smaller meeting with the people in Ghana. So I called and said, do it. Let's have it. I'll do it. Do you get it? I'll do it. I am here today in London. You may not know. But I'm here because some years ago, the Lord spoke to me about something that has to do with us being here. I don't want to go into the details. But today the Lord was showing me, he was saying that, do you see why you are here? Because when I spoke to you at that time, you believed. And you did it. I live by the faith. I live by the faith. I live by, not by the rules. I live by the faith. By the believing things. That's why I believe that all these six chairs will be filled. I believe they will come from London. Because that's what I felt the Lord was telling me. Yeah. Yeah. And I live by the faith that I have in God. And I believe with all my heart that God is going to raise up people. And that even some of my children and sons and daughters of the Lord, they are going to be wilder than I am. I mean, like when I saw the cross, a guy was holding the cross, marching in town in Van Jewel. Glory to God. I missed my chance to take my cross. So my child, my son has taken his cross and has moved through the system. What do you think? It's powerful, isn't it? Your goodness is not, you didn't do that, you didn't do this, you are kind. So don't worry, you know, when you sometimes feel so bad, how many sometimes feel so, you feel so bad, you have bad thoughts, bad ideas, bad feelings. You know, sometimes you have thoughts which frighten you yourself. Yeah, you are yeah, frightened yeah, about yeah. them thoughts. Because you feel as though there is an uncontrollable person yeah. inside who can easily do something yeah. wrong. <laughs> yeah, there is a mad person inside. Somewhere around you. <laughs> Don't be scared. The beast. Don't be scared. He is in there. I said he is in there. The greater one. I said the greater one. He says you have overcome them. Because greater is he. He is in you. And because he is in you. You have overcome. You can't fail. I said you can't fail. No. You can't fail. I said you can't fail. You made it already. One day somebody called me. I was feeling sad. The person asked me. How are you? I said I'm fine. He said, are you okay? I said, I'm okay. I told the person, listen, read the last page. He said, what? I said, read the last page. You see on the last page that I won. We won. On the last page, at the way they wrote the end, you see that we won. That's how it's going to end for you. You read that thing, you say, we won. I said, we won. We won. We won. We won. We won in the end. We were fighting at times. We thought we were going down. But at the end of it all, we won. The last page. Where it where has the end. This one I think it says to be continued. No, but that's not how I do. I'm talking about the end page. Where is the end? Then you see that in your life story, it, the end of it was you were you were not in prison, you were not in a bad place, but you see that you won because he's there. I said he is in you. Do you understand what that means? The Maker of heaven and earth is in you. See, there are three things that are wonderful. That God would be on your side. The Bible says it, God be for, for you. Who can be against you? 
How many are glad that God is on your side? Sometimes when we are playing soccer and you see a very pale one of these stars and you know that he's on your side, you are happy. <laughs> but when there's a star on the other side, you are not so happy. God is on your side. Think about it. Think about it. That he's on your side. Even with all your somewhereness, he's on your side. If God be for, for you. God is for you. There are three things. God is for you. And the second one is, God is with you. He said, I will be with you. To the end. He said, don't worry. I'll be with you. One day, I was learning, studying in Achimota school in an old library. And it was very dark and scary. And I was there with some friends. And suddenly, the friends said, we are going. And then there was another person there. And uh, she said, hey, if you are going, I'm also going. And I said, oh, but I'm here. He said, oh, no, I'm going. <laughs> Even if you are here, I'm going. <laughs> I felt sad because I felt that the person did not see me as a power or as a force that if I am there with the person, all problems can be solved. <laughs> so I felt so sad for myself that, oh, Lord, the person doesn't have the confidence in me. But I know someone that when he's with you, you will know that everything is going to be alright. And you can stay. And that's God. God is with you. You can make it. I said, you can do it. I said, I'll be with you. Don't be afraid. I'll be with you. When I was going to get married, somebody said, your wife can die. And you can also die. In fact, I heard of a brother who got married on Saturday. The bridegroom died on Monday. <laughs> Are you going to think about all those things? <laughs> but the third and the greatest is not only is God on your side, God for you, and not only is He with you, but He is in you. He is in you. I said, he's in you. He's the inside information. The inside wisdom. The inside power. That is in there. And that's why John wrote and said, Little children, you have overcome them. For greater. Greater. Tell somebody greater. Greater. Greater is he. That is in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's there. I said he's there. And I'm glad he's there. I said I'm glad he's there. Amen. Sometimes when I'm scared, I just remember that he's there. Many times I don't know what to do. But just remember that he's there. Listen, when you see a man of God moving it, don't think he always knows what to do. Often he doesn't know what to do. Just act confident as though you know what to do. Sometimes when I don't know what to preach, that's when I want to start preaching immediately so that the tension of not knowing what to preach goes away quickly. Yeah. He's there. I said, he's in you. He's on your side. He's with you. How can you fail? How can you fail on the mission field? With these three? It's not possible. You won. I said you won. Read the last page. When you seem to be going down, just tell people, read the last page. Just read the end. See how the whole thing worked out. You see that I came out up there. I was on top. I won. When the demons are frightening you about how you are going to mess up your life and your whole life is going to be a big... What's your name? Bernard what? Quarantine. Did I ask your name the last time? 
Nanda, are you the one I, I asked your name? Okay. You know? Tell the devil, stand up and tell the devil, he's in me. He's in there. He's in there. The greater one. I can't fail. I can't go down. Because he's there. I'm making it. I said I'm making it. Are you making it? Are you making it? Yeah. Think about it. You go to Bible school, you don't have even one day of experience and they send you to the world. Not, I mean, to the next door house. or to, They send you to the world. <laughs> That's a Richard, to the world. Go. Well, here you are. You will learn as you teach. Pastor Richard, remember when I sent you to London? You didn't have any experience, but you learn as you teach. Is it not powerful to learn as you teach? Are you not excited that you can learn as you teach? It's great. Powerful. So be blessed with the greater one in you and enjoy his favor and enjoy his blessing. For he will always be with you and he will always help you. And it will strengthen you for tomorrow. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Give the Lord a shout and a clap of praise. Amen. Amen. I'm glad about the last page. Now the end of it all. I'm up there. I made it. I said, I made it. I said, I made it. Hallelujah. Even when you are down, say, I'm up. Say, I'm up. And you'll find that you are up. Whenever you make a mistake in your life and it seems you spoiled your life, always remember Samson. He killed more people when he was blind. And when he was alive and moving and he had not made any mistake in his life. He killed more. More. I said he killed more. You are going to kill more. After your mistakes. After your problems. After your situations. You are going to do more for God. When the devil is trying to wipe you out. The devil is this type of final strokes. It's like you are finished. Finish over. Last whatever warning. Finish. That's how he is. That's not true. Always remember Samson. When he was blind and grinding the mill. He said, God help me. Remember. Oh, I should help you. I can help you. How can a blind man work for God now? How can a blind man do anything? I was strong. I I couldn't do much. I wasn't blind. I couldn't do much. How can a prisoner do much? Paul did more in prison than when he was free. Today we are reading. We are quoting what he said in prison. But what he did when he was free planting the churches. That's Turkey. It's the Islamic nation of Europe. All the churches are mosques. And it's an Islamic nation. But the work he did when he was in prison. That's the one God used. And he's using 2,000 years later. That's the one that's working. It's amazing. It's amazing. So come out now. I said come out now from your mistakes. Come out from your failings. And come forward. Come forth with strength. For there are greater things with the hand of God and the strength of God. For your life. Victories. I said victories. Think about it. Some of you. Your members are fair colored. Some are black. You speak in Spanish. Congregations are there. Listening. You are standing on the pulpit. You are standing on the pulpit talking to them. No one could believe. Where did you come from? Mataheku. You came from Odoko. You came from Kumasi. You came from somewhere. Born somewhere. Here you are. Who would have thought of such a thing? He said, I will show you a thing that the ears of those who hear shall tingle. For I do a new thing. He said, God has prepared it before the family. I have not seen it. He has not heard what God has prepared. 
before the foundation of this world. A wonderful thing. I thank God. I'm amazed at what God is. For a new strength has been released into the system. A new strength. A new force has been released. And those that stand in the force and flow with the force shall enjoy the force. And shall experience the force of God and the grace of God. What a wonderful thing. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. 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 Oh, Shebolo. Revelators. 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 Terribilis. Nandi Balanda, Rosiba, the Chinda, the Veresica, Balanda, the Libe. De para de licencio, la mocida de velanda de la vica veredista baladal. José que locura la sangre de lima, le revela si veredese merele de verede. What a great and wonderful thing. What a great and wonderful thing. It is. What a great and wonderful thing. I go gladly. I go. With the joy. The gladness. Of a boy. Bounding. Away. From school. I go. I feel so strong. So strong. Be strong now. Be strong. Be strong for I have strengthened you. I have strengthened your right arm. And I have strengthened your left arm. For you shall be blessed. As you are stronger in me. Strengthen yourself. For the purpose. For which I have called you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Well, I believe we are blessed. Amen. I believe God has said many things to us. Amen. We are all going to go out of this place being more prepared for the things He has called us for. And I want the heroes to stand up and be counted. A man is not somebody with muscles. Muscles, cows have muscles. Oxen have muscles. Lions have muscles. Muscles, horses have muscles. Muscles are what we eat when you eat beef stew, pork stew, and other stews. That's muscle. That's not a man. A man is a person who rises up with courage, fearless, with a spirit of adventure, to rise and to do what has not been done before, and to take upon the, himself the image of God and create what has not existed before. Yeah, that's a man. That's a man. A man is not determined by the size of his male organ. As you learn in school. He's not determined by the size of anything or by any behavior or any fighting. Judo, karate. In the real world today, all these things are turned into paper. These are not what is a man. Show yourself to be a man. A man who believes in God. So we call a man of God. A man who knows God, who can rise up and obey God, so that at the end of your life, when you are even being converted into dust, 
you will say, I go. And everybody will be listening to what are you saying? Gladly. I go. Bounding. Like a boy. Bounding away from the from school. I go gladly. That's a man. Not somebody who is now weaving on himself. You are coming after me. You are renating on yourself. You thought you were a man. Because you slept with a thousand girls. You didn't know that you were rather a goat. Or a dog. What is a man? What is a man? Let's define what a man is. For the Bible says, quit you like men. Let's show ourselves as men. Real men. Someone who knows God. Someone who has something that lasts forever. Someone who is spiritual. Who is not afraid of death. Jesus was not afraid of death. He was a real man. One brother said, when a Muslim slaps you, don't turn your other cheek. Cut off his hand. It sounds like he's strong. But Jesus said, turn the other cheek. That's God. The other one is not God. Let's follow God and we'll have true strength. That's why Jesus' words last forever. And some of these other words don't last for long. Amen.